Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today's tutorial is going to be a little bit repetitive. We're going to be using a scrolling texture for our background uh, for this game that we've been developing uh, and learning how to create. So in our last tutorial uh, we set up the character, the movement and all, you know, the jumping and the sliding. And of course today we're going to be covering the background. Now I chose the simplest way of getting the background and there are so many other ways to actually do this by instantiating every single piece of the ground. Um, but for this game individually, what we're going to do is instead of creating the ground and the 2D objects or obstacles, uh, we're going to be creating just obstacles that we're going to be either hopping over or sliding underneath, uh, sort of like Subway Surfer in a way. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into how we create this scrolling texture uh, for our background. And if you've already seen this tutorial before, this is sort of like just for those people that have not seen that tutorial. Uh, so here we have our, of course, hierarchy. And you're going to notice a couple things different. So we're going to have a game manager. Uh, we're going to have a background image or background um, plane. And we have a road plane. And these are actual planes. They're not uh, 2D sprites or nothing like that. They came from the 3D objects panel. And what we did with both of these right here is I basically set the Z axis for this one to 2. Uh, because our cameras set at a negative 2. I also set our road position. Um, let me see right here. Yeah. Uh, so I set our road position to about the same uh, length or position. All I did was simply stretch it out to a smaller size or shrink it down. And of course, lastly, we have to have a collider for our character to run into. Now, if you were following along inside our previous tutorial, our player is actually a 2D sprite. Uh, so for our character to interact with 2D, we need to be able to have a 2D box collider. Now, if you try to put a box collider on something like this, uh, so say for instance, if I add a 2D box collider, uh, you're going to notice that the box collider actually doesn't appear. And the reason for this is because these images or these planes are actually rotated off of the original axis. So they're no longer facing the X and Y axis that it originally started out as. Uh, so it basically causes the component to mess up and essentially makes the collider too small to interact with. So what we had to do was create a brand new sprite. And if you don't know how to sp create a sprite, simply right click inside the hierarchy Go over to 2D Objects and then select Sprite. Uh, once you got that sprite, you're simply going to leave the sprite renderer empty. In fact, you could disable it or you could get rid of it uh, by just selecting that and then uh, remove component. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And of course, you need to add a box collider 2D. Now to do that, you simply need to press Add Component Box Collider 2D. So once that's done, uh, you're just going to make sure that everything is set to your specific standards. Mine is just simply from screen edge to screen edge. Uh, that way, you know, it covers the entire ground. And this right here is not going to be moving at all. Uh, so we're only going to be moving the road, uh, back, uh, road image and background image or uh, render. Of course, you're going to need a texture for your background. And if I select both of these right here, uh, what you're going to need to do with these textures is first off, make sure that they're set to defaults and we're going to go over to wrap mode and then make sure that they're set to repeat. Once it's done, hit apply. Now, the reason why we put these to repeat is because if we set it to clamp, then we're going to see these weird lines that pop up and it just looks really ugly. If we set it to mirror, it's just going to put the opposite image over here. And so it's essentially going to do the same thing as repeat. Uh, but we're just going to be running repeat here. Uh, mirror once, you know, self-explanatory. And per axis, basically, just if we're going up and down or sideways. Um, so, yeah. 
You could experiment with those if you want. I just find repeat for 2D uh, scrollers slash continuous games to be a whole lot easier. Okay, um, so what we have on the game manager now uh, is the background control script. And this script is a very simple script. And if I pull it up for you guys, actually, um, you guys could see that it's very, very easy to follow. So I will be putting this inside the comment section below. So don't you guys worry about that. You can just simply copy and paste this. And then, of course, you can experiment, change, and modify to your own personal preference. Okay, so right here we have two public renders. Uh, one is background art and one is road art. Now the cool part about render is that it allows us to grab any render on the game object. So instead of grabbing just the sprite render or instead of grabbing the mesh render, it's going to grab any render that is on that game object. Uh, we also have the road art, uh, so that's cool. And we have a public float called game speed. Now, the reason why we created this public float called game speed is because if we want to level up, or basically if we reach a certain amount of coins or certain amount of time, we want to be able to increase the speed of the game so it gets harder continuously. Uh, that way, we're not going to be just stally... Uh, picking up coins and hopping over objects continuously for hours on end and it just really doesn't feel like there's a point so that's why we got that there all right underneath i mean right here we have a private vector 2 called offset this allows us to change the material and or the render's uh, motion and allows us to be able to adjust our speed on our game object so instead of void update function, we have a function that we call called update speed, update background, and update road. And we'll cover each one of those. So update speed, we have offset is equal to a new vector2. And inside that, we're going to put for the x-axis time.time .time multiplied by game speed. So what this says is that every single second that passes, we're going to multiply the x-axis by game speed so it's going to increase by the speed of game speed and then of course for our y-axis we're going to set that to zero because we don't want our y-axis to go anywhere because that's up and down all right so underneath the update background we have background art so we're grabbing our background art dot material so we're going to be getting the material inside the mesh renderer or the renderer. Then we're going to say dot main texture offset is equal to offset. Pretty cool, right? And then lastly, we're going to do the same method below. We're just going to change the first part to road art, and then we're just going to paste the rest. Now, I did try to set this up with a uh, sprite. But it ended up that it was a whole lot easier to just run it this way. Uh, for some reason, there really is no offset for our um, for the sprite image. So I actually had to adjust it to a normal um, thing. But yeah. So the results, as you could see from the beginning of the tutorial and right here, is this effect. Now, in our next tutorial, we will be instantiating objects, and they'll be heading towards us, uh, basically allowing us to dodge. And we will also be setting up the colliders for those objects. So if we hit them, then we'll be sent out of the screen, which would be horrible for us, but awesome for the game. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure that you leave a like, subscribe, check out some other vi my videos. And, of course, if you have any questions, Make sure to leave those inside the comments section below. I'll be happy to answer those questions. If you have any ideals for this game, make sure you leave that inside the comments section below as well. And of course, if you want something made or a tutorial made specifically for you, make sure to leave that inside the comments section below as well. I'll see you guys next time.